Assessment of subtalar joint motion can be done manually as well as by stepping back and watching the child perform the Coleman block test, described by Sherm Coleman from Utah. In this case, Alexander is showing us a varus hindfoot. The heel is curved inward. If this were a cable varus foot deformity, we'd want to know whether that varus is flexible or rigid. And the Coleman block test can demonstrate that. Once again, you can see varus alignment of the hind foot due to inversion of the subtalar joint. By taking a block and placing it under the lateral forefoot, we can see that Xander's heel reversed from a varus position to a valgus position. That means that the subtalar joint is flexible. And the reason that it appeared in varus in the first place was because of a rigid pronation deformity of the forefoot. The block allows the forefoot to pronate, and in this case, the hind foot corrected from varus to valgus, meaning flexibility. If he required surgery for his painful cavus foot deformity, we would merely need to correct the forefoot pronation deformity, and the hind foot would correct on its own because it's flexible. On the other hand, if his hind foot remained in varus, even on the block, it would mean that the subtalar joint is not flexible. It's a rigid or stiff varus, and we would need to correct surgically both the forefoot pronation and specific procedures on the hind foot to correct the varus to valgus.